We're going to replace the heads in an F-Series printer. This process is really the same for any F-Series printer. So first step would be to unload your material, which we've already done. And then the next step is going to be to open the top door. In order to open this top door, it's, it's locked unless you have the front door open. So I'm going to open the front door. That will allow me to open the top door. And when the top door is open, we can just grab the heads and, and pull them forward because the, the motors are no longer powered at this point. So we can move it wherever we want. So with the material unloaded, if we want to replace the head, we're going to lift up on this tab here and that's going to release this blue clip. And then to release the head, we first want to pull the ribbon cable. You do this with the machine on because pulling the ribbon cable out with the machine on tells the machine you're actually disconnecting the head. And that is a prompt for the machine to force you to recalibrate it when you install a new head. So again, the machine is on right now. I'm going to press down on this tab and pull it out. Now the machine knows the head has been removed, but to physically release the head, there's a lever on each side. So I'm going to pull this forward and now the head has been released. I can lift up on the head and pull it out of the machine. So here's our standard model head. We're going to do the same process with the support head. So again, lift up, pull this, set it aside, disconnect the actual ribbon cable here. And then on the right side of the head, we have another lever. I'm going to pull that forward. We're going to lift up and pull the head out of the machine. If you look at these heads and you actually look at the part numbers, the part numbers are identical. And that's because when these heads are new, and this is true of just the standard heads, not the TPU head or PLA head, but when a standard head is new, it can be used as model or support material. Once you load material the first time, that programs the head as a model head or support head. And that's why you have these check boxes on the front of the head. Once you've loaded the material into the head, you can actually put a check mark on which type of head you've made it. So we have our model head and our support head here unloaded. Now we're not going to put different heads and we're going to put the same exact heads back in. It'd be the same process if you had a new head. The reasons you would replace the heads are you're changing materials and you need to change the head out for a material for the compatibility reasons. There's different heads for different types of model material in some cases, or the head might may have reached its end of life. These heads have a lifespan of 1500 print hours. At that point, the machine's gonna warn you and uh, about 1350 hours that the head is wearing is reaching the end of its life and at 1500 hours, it's gonna give you another warning. They may last past 1500 hours, but at that point you may see part quality issues and, and that's when you wanna consider swapping out your head. So uh, these heads haven't reached the end of their life. We're just showing this process, but that would be the two reasons that you would ever change them out. To put new heads, into the machine, same process in reverse. We're going to first slip the head down through into the chamber and then I'm going to make sure that it's seated properly and push back on this until it locks in place. Now we're going to clip in the ribbon cable. We've got our support head in. We're going to now load our model head. Same process on the model head side. Close that up. Get it nice and tight, clip our ribbon cable in, and then you want to be sure to connect the correct tube to the right head. If we look in the back of the machine, you see there's one tube on the left and one on the right. And as you may guess, that corresponds to the left and right head. So I'll insert this down in, lift up on the tab as I do it, and now those heads have been replaced. And we need to run our automatic calibration first. So I'm going to close the front door, close the top door. And now with the top door closed, the head should both start to initialize. All right, so we're on the material screen here and we see both heads have initialized. They're gray uh, because there's no material loaded and they're not calibrated. So I'm going to go and do the automatic calibration now. And that's going to require me to take the build plate out. It's a good practice. It doesn't necessarily require you to do it, but just to avoid any collision since the build plate sticks up off the tray. Now, before we start the automatic calibration, let's take a look at what the out, how the auto calibration is working. In the back of the build plate here, or the Z stage, we have these two plus cutouts in the stage. And the way that the head calibration works is it's gonna drag the tip 
across these until they drop down on all four sides and then it's going to do the same thing with the model and it knows the distance between that so it's able to calculate the xy offset on the heads automatically using those pluses the thing is the automatic calibration is not as accurate as manual calibration so while you have to do automatic calibration anytime you have replaced the heads it requires you to do that the best practice is to at least run one manual calibration afterwards and then depending on how far off your manual calibration is you may have to run it multiple times to get it in within spec so for us since we just unloaded the heads we have to run the automatic calibration next so on the main screen if we're on the home button we'll go down to tools we'll press the calibration symbol and we can see under tip calibration it says not calibrated and that's because the calibration has not yet run so we need to press start next to automatic tip calibration and it's telling us approximately 33 minutes that includes some time for the machine to warm up and stabilize but that's about as long as it takes you to run the automatic calibration so we're going to hit start here and let it do its thing and at this point everything is automatic so there's nothing for the user to do other than wait until it's done and that's what we're going to do All right, now that the calibration has completed, we come up to the screen, it tells you the calibration is finished. I'll press the finish button. We, if we go back, we'll see it says tip calibration calibrated. Now, as I discussed before, anytime you run the automatic tip calibration, you should follow that up with the manual calibration. We have a completely separate video on the manual calibration process, which I'll link to in this video.